Welcome back everyone to VectorWorks 2014 with James Russell. This is the start of our new year and our new series going on. I'm going to kick off with a user question, our second one so far for the channel, but before that I just wanted to update you on where we're at with our current series. This year is very exciting. We have a first, second, third and post-grad classes all coming out. That means a video for every single one of those classes. That is the plan. Uh, our first year class will be pretty much the same as normal, so if you followed along so far it's just going to be more of that fun and games. Second year classes also slightly the same as normal. We're going to have a few new projects inside there, a few little fun things to do. Third year hasn't been written before. We are starting a complete new third year course and it's going to somewhat tie into the post-grad course as well. We're going to look at 3D printing, 3D scanning, augmented reality, laser cutting, a few other fun things like that. So make sure you stay tuned. But for now, I have a question here from Samantha, and she was writing to me, she saw one of our Lego videos that I'd done in previous years, and wanted me to kind of run it down again, I guess, for one of her little projects, and I needed a warm-up task, so I'm going to do it anyway. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, yeah, I'm going to try this out, I'm going to show you this lovely Lego block I built here, you can click on the side of that Lego block and you will get the video that you need to see if you want to see a prequel to this which we would have done about a year and a half ago. If not, I'm going to start again. I'm going to grab all of this and delete it, and I'm going to run you through my plan. So in the past, we've always measured our own LEGO box in class, which is always quite fun. Um, it's something to do and gets a bit practical and that kind of thing. It relates to real-world situations as well, so that's why this is a really good task. Um, but I was more interested in, because this is a virtual model that I'm creating now, what the actual sizes are, so I got this handy-dandy picture bam, down there, somewhere probably in the bottom right hand corner at this point in time. And um, you can see the full on dimension structure going on for your standard Lego blocks, your one tier high and your three tier high Lego blocks, all of their dimensions there. Um, and I'm going to use that to basically do a kind of gallery, I guess, of about mm, 20, 25 maybe blocks that I've got a nice little parts list of here that come in one of the Technica packs, I think. So I'm just basically going to lay all these parts out. I'm going to do them all on my screen. Uh, I'll probably time lapse it after the first couple just to get the flow going. And then I'm going to come back after all the time lapse and we'll have a look at the full library and maybe I'll build something else see how I'm feeling. So straight off, what I need to do is create my first Lego block. And the good thing about Lego is it's all modular. That's the important thing to remember here is you only really have to draw one block and you get all the blocks. So one block, that's all we need to do. Rectangle tool, same as always. And as you know, it's my favorite tool because we can just start anywhere and do anything we want. Now, the first thing you want to note here is that I currently don't have any um, decimal points on my on my millimeters. That's something I'm going to have to change straight out here. And if you're working on a micro scale, I always say that you should change this. Under your unit settings here from your document settings, you want to jump into here. We're currently using millimeters uh, and we want to go decimal. Now decimal precision is currently set to one. That means it'll round up or round down to the nearest one. I'm going to probably drop this back to 0.1. I don't think I need to go smaller than that. If you're working on something nano, though, like right down here, you can just throw some extra zeros on. 0.1 is going to do me fine, and I'm going to click OK. So now when I start drawing, you can see I get those lovely decimal places that I've been looking forward to all this time. I'm going to start anywhere here, uh, just instantly jumping in with my tab key, and I'm going to type in some dimensions. So I want a 7.8 by 7.8. 7.8 inside here, bam, 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 hit enter again. We've got a rectangle, 7.8, 7.8, top left hand corner currently selected. This is all jumping straight out of kind of first year, halfway through. You should be up to speed. Now, one cool thing that I'm going to do right now, these Lego blocks, because of how they work geometry wise, I can actually set my grid up to fit a Lego block inside. This is something awkward that I wouldn't normally do, but for the purposes of changing the grid, I'm going to use this opportunity. Double clicking on your snap to grid function down here in your lovely little snapping tool set. It's going to tell me I can do this, which is a great thing. For anyone who's wondering, you can hold the back quote key and it will also suspend your snapping. Awesome. Hit OK. And inside here I've got my snap grid and my reference grid. Now, it's got some funky numbers in here, probably from something crazy I was doing before. I'm going to change my reference grid inside here to 7.8. And for the sake of the argument, I'm also going to set my snap grid to 7.8, even though I might use it all the time. We'll just see what happens. I'm going to show the grid. Everything else is fine. Now, when I hit OK, you can see that the grid has now changed to the size of one of my Lego blocks. That's pretty cool. And because I've currently got snapping on, you can also see when I grab this block, it's snapping in to the size of the Lego block. 
boom, 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 boom. So all of a sudden I can work in Lego squares. Magical. Okay, before we go any further, I need to put his little hat on top. So I grab my circle tool, drawing from the center out, drawing out this way. Now it's automatically snapped to the outside, but I really know that it's got a five millimeter diameter, which means uh, my radius is going to be 2.5. Handy dandy, could have written 5 divided by 2 if I'd felt like it. Enter, enter, bam, we've got a circle over here on the right hand side. I've got a radius of 2.5, diameter of 5, perfect. Now, I'm going to do all this plan from plan view because this is how I normally work. I do everything in plan and then I do all my extruding, cutting, etc, etc, etc. Um, what I'm going to do here is duplicate this into three different blocks. So I'm going to hold down my control key, you get the little handy dandy plus symbol there. Dunk, dunk, dunk. I'm going to drag this across over to here somewhere. Now it's just doing some funky snapping, but that's fine. Undo, drag that across over to here. That's awesome. My snapping's happening on my grid lines here. So I'm just going to grab this corner and pull it back into there. And because I want to use a variety of tools, I'm going to use the mirror tool to flip that over there as well. One of these, I'm going to get rid of this. So we've got the flat tile series, which doesn't have the little knobbly bit on top. We've got the regular one high series, and this is going to be our three high series over here. That's what I'm using these three different block types for. So now that I've got the three laid out, I'm going to do some extruding. Uh, you could just as validly copy and paste all of these and then do the extrusion after, but I'm going to kill two birds with one stone by doing it this way. So what I'm going to do is uh, click on the first one here, which I've got. Go to extrude, which is control E for me on my Windows PC, or it might be uh, Command on, Apple Key E for you guys on a Mac. My extrusion height here is going to be 3.2 millimeters as per my little diagram. Um, that means three times that will be the height of the three high one, 9.6 millimeters, I believe. Yeah, that's it. Hitting OK on that, we've got one little cube there. You'll just have to trust me for now. I'm also going to do this one and this one, which I will do with a shift, just to show that you can do that. Control E for me, 3.2, it's remembered from last time. The important thing to remember though, is when you do multiple extrusions, it will group them by default. It won't show as a group here, but it's identified these as two extrudes that happened at the same time. A simple Control U or Apple key U for you guys on a Mac will bring that back to two extrudes. It's kind of like a temporary group, it's a little bit weird. Also need to do their little knobbly hats on top. So both of these are extruded to a height of 1.7 millimeters. Awesome. Once again, control U, bam, back to normal. Now, one thing you don't want to forget here is that all of these are sitting on the baseline. For those of you who've done your 3D classes so far, you'll notice that if I go to a rotated view, these are actually sitting inside the blocks, like so. What we're gonna do, and this is me just once again working from a plan view, because that's how I like to work initially. I'm gonna grab both of these blocks with a selection over the top. I'm gonna to do a Control Alt M, which is different to the Control M. Control M is the 2D move select, as you can see here. It just gives you an X and Y in relation to the plane you're currently in. I like to do the Control alt m because it gives you that extra little field down here, which is a Z offset. And it's already got a figure in here from when I drew my previous one, but I'd type a 3.2 in the Z. That means it's going to shift from its current position in relationship to the view that we're currently in by 3.2 millimeters. Bam, hitting enter on that. Doesn't look like anything's changed, but then when I head back into that 3D view, there they are right there. Awesome. The last stage that I'm going to do here is combine these I want them to be solids before I start moving them around. It would be valid to grab this, do a control G and make it into a group. But there's a better solution because we know this is eventually going to be a whole piece, which is to select over the top and add the solids. Now, before I go any further, this little friend here, he needs to be a little bit higher. So what I'm going to do instead is change the bot Z radius here to 3.2 times three. Bam, 9.6. So I've done the math inside there. The bot Z is basically wherever the bottom of that is going to sit in relationship to the ground plane. So he will now be, and if I take you into a 3D view, you'll be able to see this. He will now be floating above his little friend. What are we going to do with his little friend? Grab him and extrude it up to 9.6. So I forgot that, but you can see easy little change there, two little bits. Even from this view, hover over the two of those and add the solids together. That makes them one full solid addition. So, one component, two component, three component. That looks awesome. Now, what's the really hard part about this? There isn't really one. We just go through now, through our list, and copy and paste these as many times as we need. So I'm gonna grab this, grab these two little fellas here, and shift them down one line. I've held down my control key and let it go afterwards, so I end up with a duplicate. What am I gonna do from here? 
Oh, look at that. I've duplicated them again. From here, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just need to select over the top and keep adding your solids together and making the blocks list, which I'm going to time lapse and do in a second. Uh, just a handy one for you to know this that all of these, all of these operations I'm doing, the add, subtract, and intersect, all have a handy shortcut. Control Alt A for addition, S for subtraction, I for intersect, T for section. So, what I'm going to do here is just do a Control Alt A for me. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll be an Apple Alt or Shift A for you guys on a Mac. You can just drop down the menu and have a look. Uh, so bam, bam, bam. Oop, that's a control A. I want to do a control alt A, which is a bit of an awkward one for me, but that's okay. And you can see now in our library, when I rotate this around, look at that. There they are, all standing in a row. Cute. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and do the next, I don't know, 15, 20, 25, until I get onto something that's a little bit more interesting than a square shape. So enjoy some music, and I'll see you soon. So it was uh, relatively easy and straightforward. Um, I'm going to ditch all those pieces over there. I've grabbed one of these single duo blocks. I'm also going to grab his uh, counterpart three high block, and we're going to do some fun little bits and pieces with them. Try and keep them in order if I can. Two blocks separation. There we go. So some of the pieces I need to build now, they're the wedge pieces, which are single high, and I also need to do the slope pieces, which are they vary in different heights, it looks like. Uh, one, two, three, yeah, okay. So we'll start with the we'll start with the single slopes. So we've got a slope that's this one here. I've also got a slope that's this one here. So I'm just dragging these pieces out. And I've also got a three long slope. It doesn't look like I've made a three long piece. That's uh, going to be easily rectified. While while we're all here together, we'll do that. So I'm going to grab these pieces here, and I'm also going to grab the counterparts here. This one, and I'll just do a quick left rotation and drop him onto there. There's multiple ways you could be doing this. Once again, no way is right, no way is wrong. I'm just doing it the way that I wanted to do it just then for ease, comfort. Drag this last piece, grab it by its midpoint, copy it across, do an L. That's a control L, by the way, that I'm pressing. Um, it'll be Apple L for you guys on a Mac. Um, I always find that turning left is easier than turning right, mainly because it's only control L, whereas right, for some reason, it's control, like, shift R, or control alt R or something. I always turn left, don't know why, I'm left-handed as well, figure it out. So we've got the doubles of the threes there, I also need the singles of the threes, which are pretty easy to do. Grab these ones, drag them out, up and across. I've grabbed that by its midpoint, so I need to shuffle it one segment over. And I'll also grab their counterparts in crime over here. All of those over to here, do a bit of that. What am I doing? Control alt a Control alt a and a Control alt a and we're done. So now I can grab this three high friend that I wanted to use all along and plug it all down there. No worries. For the symmetry's sake. Pop that there. Move this down to the next spot. My snaps I decided to say no then. Awesome. So the slope pieces, in case you don't know them, is when you have a look at the side of one of these. This is our three high friend here and we need to cut from the midpoint here down this way from the second notch in down this way and from the third notch in down this way so that's what we're going to do here with the slope pieces um, and it's a pretty easy thing to do now if you've watched along with the season so far i guess uh, you'll know that all the 3d objects have a history so the way that we and the reason that i build them this way is that i can double click on this block here and it will take me back inside the history of this object at this lovely orange border which some of you will be quite used to and you can see that it takes me back one step in this creation process for this object i'm just going to do a quick save here you can see this object previously was two of the larger bricks 
and I could go even deeper inside this one here in particular and find out that he was also just a brick previously to that which is separated into two pieces. So I'm going to click Exit Solid and take me back to this stage here. We're going to edit one of these and turn him into a slope, which is going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to look at that in a front view, a right hand view, there we go. Now this might look a little bit cluttered, sometimes I move these out of the way, but in this instance I'm just going to power through and you guys will have to follow along. What I'm going to do is grab our handy dandy rectangle tool, and you can see I've got my automatic planing on at the moment. It's trying to identify which plane I'd like to hook onto. We'll try it with automatic planing. I'm going to grab this point here and draw down. Now you can see it's not going to quite let me get there because I need to change this over. It's trying to snap me into my grid points here. I want a 45 degree angle, so I'm going to hold down my shift key here. And I've restrained myself to 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and the horizontal and vertical. Sitting here on the 45 degrees and coming down to where it intersects and you can see it's giving me that little yellow piece of text which we all know about snapping corners snapping to 45 it's saying your 45 degree that you've chosen has also snapped with the object do you want to proceed yes i do want to proceed and i want to drag this out about yay far until it's covering a portion of that object i'm also going to jump inside this object here back inside one step and this might look a little convoluted with all the background going on i'm going to delete his little hat so we're left with this, which is a rectangle, floating on the plane of this. I'm going to hit my control E and extrude from this direction. I'm going to extrude the depth of the block, uh, and probably a little bit extra. So we know the blocks are 7 point, what are they, 7.8-ish. I am going to just go to a good old 10 millimeters. If we have a look in a 3D rotation now, and this will clear things up for those of you who might be missing it. I've actually got this cube, and it's been drawn in the plane of this object. It didn't snap to it, unfortunately. My automatic planing didn't pick that up, so we're going to have to move him over a little bit. Back here in the zero view, that's me tapping zero on my numpad to take us back to plan. I can then grab our box, and holding the shift key, I can slide him over horizontally until he intersects. Now, if we have a look at that again, you can see that my box is fully intersecting with that. And if I put it into a 3D mode, you'll see even better. There he is, fully intersecting. What do we need to do now? We simply grab the two components and do a subtraction. Subtract the solids. Which one do we want to keep? Always the one highlighted in red. Hit OK, and we get that slice happening through there at the 45 degree angle. Our piece that's left looks like this, which is one of the sloping pieces. Hit Exit and we're left with this after it's done all of its subtractions. That's pretty cool in my opinion, looks pretty good. Check it from the side angle here as well just to make sure it cl clipped through successfully, which it did. So together we'll go ahead and we'll do the 3 and the 4 as well. So I'm going to start here on the 3, top clicking on this one. You can see we've got this around the other way from before. To make my life easier, I'm actually going to mirror this object mirroring options up here, I'm choosing the single mirror option, finding the midpoint with my smart points, which are turned on down here, that's this option right here, and I've done a flip around. The reason I've done that is because the single, which I want to use this one here for as a reference marker for that particular corner in my side view, um, it just puts it down here facing the same way as the other one. There's no real advantage or disadvantage. So now I'm going to look at that in a right hand side view. Same as we did before, fit to objects, my favorite button over here. Uh, and you can see we've got a too high one. I'll try and, I might actually elevate these up. I'll just move them up by, oh, I don't know, 15 mil or something. There we go. Now you can see them a little bit better, distinct from all the little co-friend blocks over there. Uh, so we're going to use the corner of this one as our reference point, and we want to do a slice down here. Now I have actually got the angles already saved for these, uh, only because I don't know what that little lip height is. I guess I could measure it from their friend over here if I wanted to. Um, but just to show you an angle representation, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. Once again, going to start up here in this corner and head on down in this direction. Now, because I know the angle, but I don't actually know what other feature I want to use, I'm going to press tab, tab, tab. Normally we only go two tabs, uh, but if you've accidentally pressed it uh, before and it's taken you into the next section, you'll notice there's a couple other things you can press here. Um, so we're looking at a length now and also a angle. I am particularly interested in the angle component right here. So it's telling me what I can snap to. Now the angle that I've got here in particular is 26, and this is very specific by whoever's done this, 26.565. Now that's in the positive direction, so I need to rotate that around into a negative. 
negative symbol on the right side. Boom, there we go. So I'm now using this constrained angle. You can see my dotted red line heading down in that angular direction, and I just want to find the point where that meets our object. Bam. Once again, same as before with the 45 degrees, we get an angle slash object. This is the intersection point between the object and the angle. Click, 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 somewhere out here. We're going to do another extrude, control E for me, do an extrusion of 10. I have no doubt that when I look at this in a plan view and find that object, I'm going to have to move him across. Holding down my shift key, dragging over there, looking at that, maybe in an isometric for you know, the fun of it. And then I should just be able to subtract everything there. Do that, do that, right click, subtract solids, choosing the red one to keep. Bam, there we go, we've made our slice. When we hit the exit uh, solid addition button, it's going to transition. I just quickly want to drop that back down into the place that we had it before. So I'm going to do a control M again, and this time a negative 15 inside there. Dropped him back down on the ground plane. Exit the solid addition, and he looks wonderful, doesn't he? Look at that work of art. Quickly do this last one for you. So jumping in side this. Now this one here is going to be a little bit trickier because we don't have a reference line. Or do we? Double click on this, we're back inside this object here. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, slightly modify this one here. Uh, we might actually just exit the solid addition. Now a handy one here, if you do want to permanently do that change, you can do an ungroup on that. Remember how before I was saying when you extrude two objects together, it does an awkward kind of group together? It's the same deal here. Pressing Control u actually takes you one step back in the process, completely eliminating the previous process that you did, whether it was a solid addition, subtraction, intersection, any of those. So I've simply just broken this essentially in half. Then I'm going to add these two together to get a trio. Right click, add solids, could have used the sheet keyboard shortcut. And away we go again. So looking at that in a right hand view. Grabbing the objects button here, I'm going to select all of these as I have the other time and move them up for you guys 15 so we get a bit of a distinction. My pink lovely ground plane has been highlighted there for me. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, draw this way. Once again I have the angle provided for me. We could measure the gap again but I'm just going to work with the angle because why not? 18.435, remembering that that's a negative from our direction of travel and then I accidentally set that as a length we need to take that back if you press delete at any point in time over that field it will cancel that so here I'll try that again negative 18.435 enter there's our angle restraining us find the intersection object slash angle highlighting over the whole area there pressing X I'm going to do extrusion 10 look at that in a plan view find the object click and drag back across over this way, find it until it intersects over the entire object, check that out in a 3D view, looks pretty snazzy to me, shift click, right click, subtract solids, OK, there it is, done deal, grab both of those components, look back in a right hand view, don't even need to see the objects, do a move, tab, minus 15, jump back into a plan view, exit the solid subtraction, there's our three objects, nicely done. Now, that was very speedy. Hopefully you followed along. Hopefully you're okay and not traumatized for life. If you are, sorry. Cool. So, three little slanty objects there, three high. We're going to do the last little ones here, which are the wedges. Then I might try to draw a Lego man, and then we're going to do a little build. So, wedges, they look pretty easy in my opinion. I'm actually going to grab this one here instead of the component that I chose before, simply for ease. I'm going to double click on these. Double click on this one again in particular, break him into that, break him into that. So we're back down to one of these components. Probably what would be easier, 2020 hindsight right here, is if I went back to this point here, selected everything and just went ungroup, 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 which will take it back to all the stages back. Then I can grab these little knobbly bits, delete them, add that back into one solid using my handy dandy shortcut, and that looks like that. The clip is really easy. We just want to draw a rectangle from here in this way. Once again, I have the angle that I need, but I could just go straight to the midpoint because we know that's where it's going to end up. Or at least I know that's where it's going to end up. It's a clip like that. We need to extrude that. 
So control E, once again, we know these blocks are only 3.2 millimeters high, so I can just go for 10 millimeters. If you need to see that as a visual representation for those of you who work in 3D, that's what it looks like. It's fully intersecting inside that block. Back to a planned view for me. Now that these are friendly friend friends, we can right click on that, do a subtraction of solids, ask us which one do we want to keep. I'd like to keep the red one, please. Hit OK, and there's our cutout. So that's our wing. I'm just going to move him over a little bit and do a mirror right through here. Lovely. And because I can do some math, I'm just going to move that in the Z minus 7.9, 7.8. 7.8 Cute That's all my wedge pieces done Now I'm going to exit I'm going to quickly rearrange these and when I come back we're going to try out a Lego man How awesome is that? I laid them all out so they look pretty So they're all our Lego pieces so far I think that'll do me for now I added in a couple of the sixes in here and one of these big board pieces which I saw lying around which could be handy at some point. But right now we want to focus on making a Lego man. I've got a nice picture which I'm going to import now. Click and drag that in. Yep, do I want to import it? PNG sounds fine. So this is a pretty little picture that someone's drawn of a Lego man. I'm going to scale him and try and draw him as accurately as I can. What I'm going to use to scale this is probably one of these blocks I would think. So what I'm going to do is measure this across, even though I probably know what the measurement is. We've got a 15.6 across on here. What we need to do is compare this guy's waist, which is from about this point here, if I can do that, across over to here. Now, this is where snapping. I'm going to take that off so I can get a nice snap across here. So we want 26.7. Oh, no, we don't. I missed that point. Let's try that again. From this point over here, over to this point here. So let's do a 28.3 scaling for our friend here. And he needs to become 15.6. 28.3, 15.6. Okay. Grab this. Modify. Scale objects. 28.3 is our current distance. We want it to be 15.6. So that's how the scaling tool works. So I need to write those numbers down. So I use symmetrical by distance. The current distance is 28.3. That's his waist distance across. He's going to fit on top of one of those blocks perfectly. I know that from years of Lego playing. So his new distance is going to become 15.6. So hitting OK, that shrinks that down, and if we were to grab him approximately by his middle and place him over the top of there, his width should be the same. I don't know if you can see that dotted line outlining that, but you can see that his width of his body is across that perfectly. So that's how we're going to work that. And we know that his um, from bum to front, I guess you'd call it, is going to be the width of one of our regular blocks, because that's how they're made. So now that I've got him all lined up and happy and ready to go, I can start tracing him out ready to be made into a real Lego man, which is kind of cool. Uh, where are we going to start with it? Excellent question. Um, we are probably going to have to start with his waist across here. Now we know that's going to be 15.6, same as our regular distance across, which, yeah, it's 7.8 times 2 if you want to do the math. And then his height here. This is going to be some sort of standard height. Um, I'm guessing 13 sounds about right. Is that divisible by 3.2? Mm, no, they're going to be 12.8. At a guess, hopefully Lego makers were really creative when they decided that they would start building the Lego men. Why can't I tap into that? We'll try that again. Across here for his bottom, I'm going to really line this up. 15.6 and then I want to go confirm that and upwards direction we're going to do a 12.8 hopefully when I realign that everything works out if not he might actually not be quite square there looks like he is not geometrically sound which is a bit disappointing we'll just uh, creep that up and see what happens what you will notice though is that he has a taper. I'm going to make this slightly opaque for you guys watching at home. There's my square. He has got a taper to him and he has a rounded corner which happens on all his corners. We're going to get to that in a second. So we're going to extrude that out. Um, the extrusion depth a little bit unknown at this point in time seeing as that wasn't a standard shape uh, and I can't quite read these measurements over here. So we're going to take a pot shot and then we're going to try and compare it to the real thing. Let's choose an extrusion of 10. 
Look at that in the front view. Turn it left, go back to our plan view. So now I've rotated that object around, I'm going to drag it over here to our counterpart, which is the side view, which is handy to have. Grab the front handle and pull that back in. Just like that, I'm going to line it right up on the midpoint of that blurry, blurry line. And just remember this is a representation, so that's fine. Look at that, that's looking pretty snazzy. Go back into a front view, turn it left again, go back into my plan view, grab that and drag it back across to the chest so we can do our find a little bit of work on him and once again this is just going to be a little bit rough but that's all right so the fine little bit we need to do is grab another rectangle snap into this corner I'm going to shoot way over the top of this just lining that up bam outside there we're going to mirror that across his chest plane like so I'm going to do a, grab both of those extrude them out to a height that I know is greater than that box, which is 10, but I'm going to make it 20. So now, if I have a look at that in a little bit of a 3D view, you can see I've got some massive towering boxes intersecting into there. And while I've got it in this view to help those of you who might be 3D learners, extract, uh, subtract those solids, keep the red one, bam. Okay, looking back at that in the plan, you can see what we've got going on there as our little Lego man. I'm going to leave that one there. It's okay in its alignment, I guess. Um, and we're going to do his legs. His legs are much, much simpler, thank God. So his legs, according to me, and this is just, once again, me making a few executive decisions here. We'll go from the midpoint snap, and we'll come out as far as his legs go. There we go. We're going to extrude that, and from what I can see over there on the other side, it looks like they're the same. That little initial base bit, which is this rectangle here, looks to be the same depth as this piece here. This piece here is currently at a depth of 8 millimeters. So let's also make this at a depth of extrude 8 millimeters. Beautiful. That's popping straight off the ground plane there. What about this fella? Is he sitting on the ground plane? Not quite. Let's bring him down with his buddy. There we go. I thought it might have jumped a bit. We're going to trace out his legs here. So he's got a little circle going on at the top of his legs. Mm. or something like that and then he's got some rectangle bits for the rest of it so snapping off the back corner there I'm going to jump down to the bottom of that and I'm going to change my mode back to my favourite mode the three point mode as you would all know if you followed along there and another one straight out to his little toe and down snapping to the bottom you can do a click 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 and a bit of a right click and an add surface on that we can also do an extrusion once again taking a pot shot here we'll just say it's about eight looking at that in the front view turning it left it's sticking to the ground plane which is nice just make sure if i look at that in a right hand view or a left hand view it's sitting nicely on the ground plane back to my zero view which is planned view there's his leg as it stands it's obviously going to be a little bit too wide it's okay though, popping that down there, might give it a fraction of a nudge across, pulling that leg component in to about here, and he's got a little taper to him, which is a bit sneaky. How are we going to do that? Exactly the same as before. Overshoot straight through here, uh, about there. I'm going to extrude over the whole lot there. Choose a figure greater than that. Go back to X, select both, right click, subtract swords, keep the red one, click OK. There we go, you can see I've missed a bit there, which is unfortunate. Means that my little box, look at that, see, his leg's just out by a fraction. There's always, always a chance of doing this. That's why it's really important to get alignment things really spot on. There we go. Now when I try that process again, grab both of those, right click, subtract solids, keep that one, hit OK, looks good. Do a mirror across the front of his body. There's his legs. Excellent. Last little bit of that is to add all of those together. Add all of those together. Like so. That's going to look really good. Okay. I'm going to leave his arms for a second. We're going to look at the head component. Now the head. I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Uh, I can't actually remember if we've done this yet inside of some of our classes. We use the rounded rectangle tool to duplicate his head. And... Ironically, it's almost perfect in its current form, so that's great. That's an excellent starting point. 
Um, what we're going to do is also draw a rectangle from here. See if I can land this on. Give me a snappy. There we go. So obviously we're not quite aligned here perfectly, which makes me a little bit sad. Give me the vertical snap. Give it to me. Out to here. We'll fix that alignment issue in just a moment. I also want to go from the top here. Now we know these are 1.7 high. These little knob bits from when we built our thing before. And how wide are they? 2.5. That's exactly right. Awesome. Now, you kind of like, why have you just drawn half that, James? What are you on about? I'm going to grab this, head on down here, draw over that half, and delete this bit. Clip the surface, hit delete. One, two, three. Right click, add surface. Now, we're going to use a cool little process called sweeping. Some of you might remember it from, oh, it would have been second year classes, about three, maybe four classes in the advanced 3D stuff. We discussed it. It was along with lofting, if you remember making a boat and some butterflies and stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to try sweeping. I can never remember which half to do it on. Uh, sometimes you put the loci down, but it's only really if you're making donuts and shapes like that that have a gap. I think you just run it regularly for this. So we're going to give it a go and see if it turns out the wrong way. So from your model menu, sweep, control alt w is the shortcut for it, second letter in, come on guys, you can do better than that. All the default settings are normally right, but this might flip from that point, so we'll see what happens. It flipped the right way. Awesome. So, does that look cool? Yes it does. Does it look like the Lego Man head? Yes it does. When I turn it into 3D, is it going to look like a Lego Man head? Yeah, pretty much it does. I'm going to look at that in a front view just to get my alignment correct, zoom in a little bit, grab the center point of that and make sure that we move it up. This is where I'm fixing that alignment issue that you guys were completely raging about just then and move that up to that point there. Now when I look at that in a three view, which is my isometric, look at him. He's a little Lego man growing, growing up so big and fast. Doesn't that look cool, guys? That's pretty awesome. Only thing left is his arms. Now they're a little bit trickier. I'm not. I'm not going to lie to you. They're a little bit tricky. I haven't quite figured it out. So we'll do it together. What we've got here is the hands. They're a pretty simple feature in my opinion. It looks like there's a circle that goes through there. There's also another larger circle that goes through there. I'm going to send that to the back. Yeah, that was a control B by me for those of you who need the back command. I'm going to make them slightly transparent, which I normally do here through opacity just while I'm drafting. Turn them all back to full later on. And I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to start from a little bit subset in. This blurry image isn't helping, but it's okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of that action on there. You can also see it doesn't come to a point here. It actually comes to a circle. So craftily, we'll try and help out our little Lego man by giving him some circle fingers. I'm going to use the two-point circle for this and just arbitrarily choose that as his circle finger. It might be like, what are you on about once again? I, I don't know myself sometimes. It's a little bit crazy. Um, normally with this, you can just keep drawing objects until it works. That's generally how, how it goes down whenever I'm doing the drafting. And it generally seems to work for me. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. Over to there. Draw another box. And because this is quite artistic, we can make it however we want. Somewhere over there, somewhere over there. It'll all work out in the end. That one, that one, that one, that one. Right click, add the surface of all of those together to create that strange object. Make sure that's at the front. Right click, clip surface. You might have to watch that in slow motion. Click, 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 right click, add surface. Bam, that's his little Lego hand in my opinion. Horseshoe shape with some knobbly bits on the end. So this part here is just a cylinder, which we can just do with a circle in a front view and rotate it later. That's exactly what I'm going to do here with my extruded object. Just choose probably the width across there to there. Extrude that, take a pot shot in the dark. It's going to be like three millimeters. Press my zero key. Yeah, there it is sitting there. Look at that little fella. Grab that, drag it over to here where his arm joint, I guess you'd call it, kind of starts. Do a little handy dandy rotation around this way towards the front of the hand. That's looking okay. We need to shrink that back though. So our extrusion, let's take that back to 2.5. Naturally it's gone in the wrong direction, which is fine. Can I get a parallel on that? Mm, 
should be able to. Okay, it's not letting me do a parallel. But that's alright. I'll just do it arbitrarily. To somewhere there. Let's see if we can add these two components together. They are addable. There we go. Little hand is done. The arm's the last little bit, and this is the bit that I've been dreading, because I didn't actually know how I would do it until we did a sweep just before, and I had an ingenious idea. So we're going to do it with a sweep. So what we're going to do is come off this point, meeting this point. Can I manage to pull that off? Maybe. Let's do that. Does that actually run at a tangent to that? Because that would be amazing if it did. Starting about here, running our way down, see if we can get an intersection off that but it's not quite going to happen. So we'll just lengthen his arm to be whatever that needs to be. Pulling that out over to here, making that slightly transparent so everyone can see what we're doing. All of those of you playing at home, you're going to want to see this. I'm going to choose an arbitrary point about here, run it through to about here and clip that section off. Then I'm going to do some sort of curve. I haven't quite figured out what this curve is, whether it's a circle or not. Let's see if we do a three point from here we know it's got to go back to here. We can see how I'm fitting this in. Fit that to about there. That's what I'm going to say is about the curve that we need. Does that go over the top? Kind of a little bit. That's all right. So that point to that point to that point. And put this one. This is always just, as you know from all of my first year classes, it's always just about the objects that you're choosing, breaking everything that you see into circles and squares and circles and squares. Look at that, that's pretty cool. So we're going to subtract this one with these two on top, clip the surface, delete that. That's his arm profile right there. We're going to then do a sweep on that for a little bit and then we're going to see how it turns out. Now the only thing I'm wondering is if this sweep needs to be whole or not. Let me just try something. See, I did a sneaky pause there and you didn't even know what I did. That's pretty cool. So what I ended up doing was just extruding this out. I took I took a little bit of a pot shot, um, but we'll, we'll go through it together now. And I think I know how I'm going to do it. So looking at that in front view, you can see the extrusion that I did. It's hiding back inside there. I can actually make it a little bit bigger so it becomes square. So our extrusion there at the moment is 5.9. So I'm going to make this also 5.9. Now keep that number in your head, 5.9. It's going to come back to it and haunt us later. I was trying to figure out because the wraparound of this whole shoulder thing needs to be flat here, but his arm should actually be curved and cylindrical here up until this point. And it kind of became a bit fuzzy in my head. I had to stop and think about what I was doing. The secret that I'm going to choose here is actually breaking this right about there. And I'm going to do that by just putting a very, very slight taper in here. This is a bit untested, so we'll see how we go. Just putting a very slight taper into that extruding an object out there by 5.9 plus a bit something, 10. Grabbing my X key, grabbing both of those and doing a subtract solids on that. So that's just got a slight break. The reason I wanted to do that is because I actually want a little bend right there where it kind of separates. I do little talking marks there from the body. This is the important part. I was going to do a sweep, but it's actually better to do a, uh, a fillet across here. Fillet, for those of you who don't remember, is the curvy one. It's when you make an edge curvy. Uh, so have a look at what I'm going to do here. I'm going to grab our 3D Fillet Edge tool, which is down here. I'm going to select some faces. I've already typed in a radius, but I need to make that 5.9 divided by 2. That's the important part, that divide by 2, which actually turns it into like a, I don't know, like a 2.95 or something like that. Grab a few of these faces, click on each one, holding down shift will highlight these. And the reason I want that breakpoint is to try this. I'm going to hit the tick, and you end up with that. And that looks a little bit crazy, but I think it might be close. Mm, it would be, except for that. That's what I was afraid of. Can we eliminate that somehow? Just to show you what I've done there. That's what it turned out to be. I really wanted to keep that shoulder joint nice and tight up there. Showing you the other option uh, would have been if we only selected the outsides, which is what I did before. Um, and we might just compromise and go with that. So jumping forward a little bit from there, I played around a bit more. Couldn't quite get it to be perfect, but I am at a point where we're happy to move forward. 
Um, grabbing my mirror tool, I'm going to duplicate the whole of his arm across his body, something like that, and then I'm going to get rid of this. See ya! And look at our little Lego man! Isn't he cute? Um, before I go into my full preview, I do want to get his colours right, because that's a very important part of all Lego personnel. Found a yellow that works, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to do his uh, head and his hands in that particular yellow, which is saved here. He's going to, in this case, have a red top, is my choice. He's going to have some blue jeans on, so there's a lovely bright, bright, bright red. And just a blue from in here in the deep blues. Excellent. We'll put his little smiley face on a little bit later, I think, when we talk about some decals. Maybe I'll save that for another day. Um, so grabbing all him, I do want to group him at this point in time so I don't lose all those separate components. And I am going to grab him like this and stand him upright. Oh, look at that. All right, are you guys ready? Are you ready? Because I'm, I'm pretty ready. I think I'm, I think I'm fully ready, except... Oh, he got a slight slant when he brought him up like that. Let's do a control L instead a couple of times. See, control L is so much easier every single time. We're having some ground plane selection issues there as well. Come on, stoppy, snappy, snap. He's just decided to stand in the middle of all the blocks like a true, true trooper. Okay. Let's rotate that around and have a look at our final Lego man. There he is. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool, guys? That's so awesome. I'm really happy with how that turned out. That, that looks so good. Hello, little Lego man. We'll put your face on later and you will be so set and ready to rock. So, that's about as far as I'm going to take that. Uh, I'm going to maybe time-lapse this next little section where I just play around with these blocks and lay them out um, so that Samantha's got something to check out when she opens this file. In this space... The darkness lingers. Middle of life. Bright. You reach out and grab that light. The palpable. Take. Meaning of life. In this space. You set the tear on the table. table. Its flicker. A delicate tease of what you might see. The early shadows barely breathe in that intimacy. Color white. As you look, as you reach, recognition bursts. Its brightness, the brightest sun reflected on a field of snow. So in that moment, the whole room explodes. We start as a white cube. With the floor and walls Where we put up our ideas and watch them hang And then we take them down again Again, 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 again. In this space We speak of the color white The color of all colors combined The color of all our options The color of our connection that traverses space and time. time. Bye, 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 bye. Color white. December in the north. The, the darkness, darkness lingers so that even the shade of the moon seems bright. You reach out and grab and that light. Color white. The palpable. Tangible. Meaning of life. In this space. Of the color white. The darkness lingers, meaning of life. So that even the shade of the moon seems bright. You reach out and grab that light. The color white. The palpable, tangible, meaning of life. In this space. Color white. Reach out and grab that light. The color white. The palpable, tangible, meaning of life. In this space, 
fun uh, that's all the time i've got to work on this today i thought uh, just while this renders out in my favorite rendering mode as we all know the artistic render work sketch mode uh, i think things look much much cooler in that mode uh make sure you check out the remaining series coming up uh, like i said i've got about four or five months worth of videos to publish on through so that's going to be a lot of fun um there's uh, heaps of stuff going on on the channel. Like I said, I'm going to try and 3D print some of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to make sure we get an augmented reality Lego project happening and maybe even uh, try and record some of the classes in class activities so that you guys get to see how much fun we get to have in real life as well as the virtual world. As always, I'm James Russell. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe, check out some more, throw out some likes. If you have more questions, make sure you keep them coming through personal message or through the comments, and I will see you next time. Have fun, guys.